Breaking news in the NFL, the Tennessee Titans game set for the Steelers on Sunday is postponed. The Titans coming out with another positive test on Wednesday, bringing their total to four players. We were waiting for a press conference from head coach Mike Vrabel. It is scheduled for uh, early, early afternoon, but we're going to wait to see if that happens. But this is the latest development following the Tennessee Titans having an outbreak of COVID. The total number of players now up to four. Well, we're joined now by our senior NFL writer, Jonathan Jones, here to help us break down this breaking news. Jonathan, we have another positive test with the Titans organization. Now their game scheduled with the Steelers is postponed. Your first reactions and thoughts are what? Yeah, not totally surprised by this just because, all right, they were able to play the game last week. And then they get, of course, those uh, eight positive confirmed. They were not false positives. They were confirmed positives. And so then you get another one that comes out today. And truthfully, the way that, that we all understand this virus to work is that because of the incubation period, you're not entirely sure if you're out of the woods yet. You don't know if that's all. And so, okay, you take care of those guys, you put them off in quarantine, and everything is fine. And so because of that, it seemed like we were trending in this direction where it's unclear if these teams are going to be able to play on Sunday. Now, the Tennessee Titans facility, I'm told, is going to be closed through Friday. So the earliest that they could have even gotten in there would have been on Sunday. Saturday. That's very difficult for the Titans to get in there on a Saturday, probably have a walkthrough, turn around and play on Sunday. So what do you do? You can postpone the game. You can push it to a Monday, potentially to a Tuesday. But I was speaking with a Titans source earlier today who mentioned this is a bit of a double edged sword because for the Titans, they still have a very difficult game the following week scheduled for Sunday uh, against the Buffalo Bills. So now you've given them a short week to go ahead and do that. So it's a bit of, you know, cutting off your nose to spite your face. Do you take it now or do you take it later? Uh, what never really made sense to me was switching around the buys. I know a lot of people yesterday were looking at a week seven and a week eight, eight buy for these two teams and saying, all right, well, if you move some games around, you can potentially play this later in the season. I can tell you that it is less likely that this game would be pushed into later in the season. And the reason for that is because the NFL would be foolish to think that of the 256 games, this is the only one that will be impacted by COVID. We have already seen it rear its head already three and a half weeks into the season, why wouldn't this happen again? And as soon as you move one game and as soon as something else happens and you got to start moving other games and now it gets really, really complicated. So they want to try to keep this schedule intact as much as possible, keep the integrity of the schedule that they went into the season with. And so because of that, uh, obviously this game, again, is being postponed on Sunday. We are going to see if they will decide to play this game on Monday or Tuesday. But certainly the NFL, if everything can be copacetic, if, if they can come back and find that all of these tests uh, are negative with the remaining Tennessee Titans players, the Pittsburgh Steelers have not had any issues so far, uh, that they will do everything they can to play this game in week four. This is definitely a fluid situation that we're going to be watching updates as they come in. But Jonathan, you wrote an article. It's on CBSSports.com about the competitive balance. One line you have here, all it would take is just one game to be canceled for competitive balance to be thrown off. Can you explain what that means and how this plays into that article? Yeah, it's a lot of what we are seeing in college football right now. And it's trying to figure out, okay, uh, you know, for example, with the college football playoff, are you going to allow a 10-1 a and one team in the college football playoff against a 7 and no team and so it's figuring that stuff out in the NFL this entire league is based on competitive balance uh, there's a hard salary cap for a reason that a team in Green Bay Wisconsin can compete with a team in New York City or Los Angeles and that's what makes that is sort of the cornerstone of this entire league what we also understand is that a 16 game season everybody plays 16 games maybe somebody has a tougher schedule one year than somebody else maybe Seattle has to travel more miles than everybody else Denver plays in the altitude and that's a home field advantage all of those things we understand that but we also understand that everyone is going to play 16 games in a 17 week season everybody gets a bye and that's the way it goes well when one team or two teams because it can't just be one team missing a game it would be uh, multiple teams missing games right when two teams miss a game what happens if it's the Tennessee Titans and at the end of the season they're looking at let's just say a 12 and 3 record meanwhile the Houston Texans were 12 and 4 what do you do with the AFC South? You can continue extrapolating this and going down the rabbit hole on and on and on. But if it happens to one game for two teams and it is likely, and of course, again, 
it is very possible. I understand that this is an isolated incident and one doesn't mean that it will happen again, but that we have seen this happen after just three weeks in the NFL season. I think we would be foolish to imagine that this is it. And so because of that, this is the issue that the NFL faces. And it is crucial to note that the NFL has not publicly come out with, hey, Here's what we're going to do if there's a 12 and 3 and a 12 and 4 team at the end of the season. They've kept their plans under wraps and I've been asking these questions for months in conference calls with NFL executives and officials. And so because of that, they are kind of flying, I guess, a little bit by the seat of their pants. They do not want to show all of their cards right now. It's understood. But again, they want to play all 256 games. And that is why this game right now is being postponed for the sake of competitive balance. Allow the Titans to get a day or two of practice. And hopefully they can play this game if all the tests come back negative on Monday or Tuesday. Jonathan, do you see this as a, as a wake-up call to either other teams and how they maybe are approaching their COVID protocols and just knowing that this is the first incident, start of week four, we knew it was going to happen. It was just right. a matter of when. Yeah, I think so. And that's why the NFL has also been so on these head coaches about wearing masks. And I know a lot of people in the general public don't really understand. If they're being tested daily, why are you wearing a mask? Well, the, the very basic reason is that uh, I can test negative for COVID. I cannot have COVID in one minute and then grab a door handle and then I can contract COVID. And that's sort of the idea is that these guys are not in bubbles and it is not the NBA. It is not the NHL. They're doing all that they can. These team facilities are spick and span. It is about as, as good a deal as you can have. But Football obviously is not conducive to social or physical distancing. And so when we understand that you can take a test one day, the next day can come back negative, that doesn't mean that you did not contract COVID in the time it took from having that test taken to getting your results. And then, of course, they still don't test on game day. Uh, you know, we had the issue with the false positive with Matt Stafford. And so we talk about daily testing. They are not getting seven tests a week. They're getting six. And so when you look at all of these things, the NFL is trying its best to, one, uh, show that the, the league, their coaches, their players and staff are taking this seriously. But again, it's really, really hard. You cannot out test a virus. Uh, uh, you know, you can't test every half hour. And so because of that, these things are going to happen. We are going to see players continue to test positive for it. We, are, we have all been impressed by the low numbers relative to how large the, the league is. You know, 2,400 players. And each week we see there were zero or one, up to five or so. This is obviously the biggest and largest outbreak we have seen in the NFL this season. It's impressive. Uh, truthfully, and to, to opine a little bit, it's impressive that we have not seen it yet. Uh, but furthermore, I think, again, we would be foolish not to imagine that this can and will happen again this season. And we certainly hope that those who are testing positive are healthy, right. safe health, obviously the most important aspect here. But getting to the X's and O's, it's going to be a lot to figure out. We're just getting started here on our continuing coverage. Pete Prisco will be joining us next as Sunday's Steelers-Titans game postponed. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.